morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to worship you this morning, Lord. Cleanse our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, and make us worthy to be in your presence. We ask your blessings on all those who will partake in this worship service. Bless them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
complete the whole print. God gives us grace often in unusual ways. Let us be more aware of the ways God's grace comes to us. May we always show gratitude and praise God, especially for the ultimate gift of grace, Jesus. We praise God for all the gifts God has given, especially God's gift of Jesus. The man who was lame from birth received something unexpected and praised God. Like him, help us to rise up and testify to the goodness of God. United, let us share God's love and grace with others. Amen. And now for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed on the big screen or in the hymnal on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I know you usually sit at this time, but can everybody please rise again? Did I hear complaints? Wow. Don't you like doing that? Oh. Um, we kind of skipped over the unison prayer this morning, and the words in it, I think, are very important this morning. So I would like us to read the opening prayer in your bulletin or on the screen in unison. Sorry, sound room. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Almighty God, we are so grateful that you often surprise us with your grace. Help us to be like the lame men who walked, leaped, and praised you. Help us to rise up, testify, and praise your glory as we witness and share the grace of Jesus with all we need. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you may be seated. Candy, before you get started, you can have a seat. In your bulletin, it says that we are now going to recognize our lay servants today. Today is Lady Sunday. And uh, Lady Sunday focuses on the celebration of the ministry of all Christians, especially those who aren't ministers of word or sacrament. It offers a chance for members of all ages to pause and consider their own unique calling to ministry within the community of believers. We are all part of that. And it's usually observed on the third Sunday of October. So this morning, I would just like to recognize the lay servants of our church, if you may not know. So when I call your name, if you would, um, if you would stand across the front here, if you can, that'd be greatly appreciated. Ed Bowers is one of our lay servants. Brian Swirl. Candy Newhouse. Sheila Hill. Yvonne Lincoln. Dee Halpin. Brenda Goebel and Harry Bishop. 
These are your lay servants of your church. And we thank all of these individuals for all they do for our church and reach out to people within the church. There's a lot of work that's done behind the scenes that you may not see by our lay servants. And we're going to start trying to use them more in our services. So um, I hope there's no issues with that. Um, most of them already help quite a bit. So uh, thank you again for all you do. But at this time, there, we have two individuals up here who um, took an advanced class for their lay servant ministry uh, this past spring. And we would like to recognize them. Actually, there's three. One is not here. Uh, the first one is Yvonne Lincoln. Uh, she may be watching online, so Yvonne, thank you. Next, we have Sheila Hill, who took an advanced class on conflict resolution. And Candy Newhouse also took the advanced class on conflict resolution. Thank you, ladies. So the pastor's going to present them with their certificates. I know they've already received their certificates by email, but we thought it'd be nice to honor them here in the service this morning and put their certificates in a plaque. So uh, that's what we've done. So thank you, ladies. Sheila and Candy. Um, Candy Newhouse has successfully completed the necessary requirements and is hereby recognized by GNJ Lay Seven Ministries as 2022 Advanced Class Conflict Resolution. Thank you. Yvonne. Yvonne also did the same class, um, and so Sheila Hill has successfully completed the necessary requirements and is hereby recognized by GNJ from um, Greater New Jersey on um, Lay Servant Ministries as Advanced Class 2022 on Conflict Resolution. So Sheila, congratulations. Okay, lay servants, thank you very much, and we look forward to a good 2023. Now. Okay, they said third time's the charm, so. <laughs> I need all the kids to come up. <laughs> okay, I got an important question for all of you. All right, do any of you feel that anybody here is your friend? <laughs> You're my friend? These two are brothers, so we'll separate them. <laughs> Okay, now they're saying they're friends. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tino, this is important to pay attention to, okay? So it's important that we all recognize that we have friends. And it's important to recognize that we have all kinds of friends. And friends are something that you can have for a lifetime. I have a friend. I'm not going to say how old I am. But I graduated in the 70s from Pemberton, and <laughs> stop telling my age. Uh, so, <laughs> so I have a friend that lived in my neighborhood that I am still friends with today, and she lives in Tennessee, and we talk on the phone all the time. So sometimes you make lifetime friends. Sometimes you just have a friend that you just recently met. But today I'm going to talk to you about a lifetime friend. 
And let me tell you, it's nice to have a lifetime friend because they know everything about you. And they accept everything about you, just like Jesus does. They know you, and they will always care for you and love you no matter what. But today I'm going to talk about some friends, and I'm going to read from 1 Samuel 18.1. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Now, Jonathan was Saul's son, and Jonathan and David became best friends, and it says here that he loved him as himself. Now we're going to go through a passage of time, and a lot happened, but I'm going to skip all the way from 1 Saul 18 to 1 Saul 20, 42. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me, and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left, and David went back to the town. Now, a lot of conflict happened between their families in between, but still, in all of that, David and Jonathan stayed friends and took care of each other. And that's what I want you to know, that you have a friend in Jesus. And Jesus will always be there and be your friend forever. And hopefully, standing here or out in the pews is somebody else who will be your friend forever. Amen? Amen. All right, let's head to Sunday school. All children are dismissed to Sunday school. <clears throat> good morning again. Morning. God is good? All and all the time? God is good. Yes, he is. I'd like to welcome everyone here in person this morning, and especially those watching online. Uh, at this time, we'd like to recognize anybody that may be worshiping with us for the very first time. Uh, if you're worshiping with us for the very first time online, please comment so that we can say hello to you. And if there's anyone here in person this morning, please raise your hand. We'd just like to say hello. One in the back. Okay. Welcome. And she said she didn't mind. Uh, her name is Laura, correct? Lauren. And um, we've met. And hello. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, make sure you're filling out those Connect cards while I'm giving you the announcements for the week. Okay, meetings coming up for the week. United Methodist Women and the Missions Committee will have a joint meeting after the service in the library. Okay? Uh, PPR, they have a meeting Thursday night at 6 o'clock. All involved in that, uh, make sure you attend that meeting. Okay, um, I received notice this week. Uh, many of you know, remember, uh, Denise Mandola. We lost Denise back in July. And uh, I received a message from her sister that there is going to be a service for Denise. It will be this Wednesday at the, um, at the First Presbyterian Church on Garden Street in Mount Holly at 11 a.m. if anyone can attend. So that's Denise Mandola, who we lost back in July. The service for her life will be on Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the First Presbyterian Church on Garden Street in Mount Holly. <clears throat> okay, all right, this is the week. We've been talking about it a lot. Dinner church is this week, Wednesday night. We're going to have dinner church. We're going to have a nice meal. We have uh, a great duo coming out to us. This duo, oh, sorry, this duo is coming all the way from New York uh, to share the word with us and share some music with us. 
So Wednesday night, when you come out for that pasta dinner, um, we will have a donation jar near the uh, food line if you'd like to donate towards the food. And then later in the evening, we will do a love offering for the duo that is coming. Uh, the duo is called Joyful Noise. And let me tell you, they are joyful and they will give you some noise. So um, we hope all of you come out for that on Wednesday night. It will start promptly at six o'clock, okay? All right, also this week on Saturday, what are we having? Pancake breakfast. Pancake breakfast. From 8 a.m. to 11, we will be in the Cornerstone having our pancake breakfast. Uh, tickets are $10 each uh, to come out and join us for fellowship and have pancakes. If you want, you can eat here or you can come in and uh, have an order to take out. I make it really easy for you, okay? If you buy your ticket today, you just have to come in on Saturday, get your to-go order, and be on your way, okay? If you buy your ticket today. What am I trying to tell you? Buy your ticket today, okay? All right. So remember that on Saturday for our breakfast uh, pancake fundraiser for the missions committee. Also, trunk or treat is coming up. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. <clears throat> we need all the help we can get for this. And also, we need vehicles to give out goodies. So if you can help in any way with this, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. If you have any questions, you can call the church office, and we can give you the answers that you may need. Okay, we had an anniversary, our 150th anniversary meeting a couple weeks ago. And we wanted to let you know that we came up with a lead team. Um, for our anniversary. So you will be hearing more from these people as the year goes on, as we will be celebrating our 150th anniversary of this church in 2023. So our lead team will be Debbie Biddle, Renee Lambertson, Sue Globax, Harry Bishop, and Karen Rosano. So these people will be reaching out to get other people involved. So um, we look forward to uh, more great announcements about our 150th anniversary. Okay, altar flowers today. The altar flowers today were given by Linda Quinones. Uh, Linda has not been able to be, be with us in service for a while as she's helping take care of her brother Al. But Linda sent this in um, uh, about the flowers. First, the flowers are for Harvey, whose birthday is today. Harvey Brown always watches online, makes a lot of comments, and um, Harvey, we just wanna say happy birthday to you today, and these flowers are in your honor. Also, Linda says, the flowers are in honor and memory of all the Brown family men. Praise the Lord for another birthday for our brother Harvey, Praise the Lord for many more years with our brother, Al Brown, starting his new, starting his new life, God-given journey. As you all know, Al Brown had a lung transplant um, about a month ago, okay? Also, these flowers are in memory of our amazing father, Albert Brown, who started our faith journey and passed on to the Lord in October of 2009. These three men to be treasured and loved forever. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful men in our life, Linda Quinones. Okay, birthdays for this week. Anybody have a birthday this week? Okay, they're in your bulletin. As I said, Harvey Brown is today, and I think that's the only one we have for this week. What about wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? No wedding anniversaries? Okay. Then I'll turn it over to Harry at this time. Greetings again. Let's be in a spirit of giving our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings to the Lord Jesus Christ.
Children of God, please rise for a doxology. Let us all join in our offertory prayer as seen on the big screen or in your bulletin. Gracious and loving God, we are humbly thankful for our blessings, including the unexpected and surprising ones. You give us an eternal May the treasures we bring use to shower others love and grace so that they too may walk and lead and praise you in the name of Jesus we pray Amen Now D. Happen will give us our praises Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Okay. We had um, a very short list this week, so I was thankful for that. Um, it started uh, with an emergency uh, prayer request for Al Brown. Um, he had some air around his heart, and... Um, he had to go into the emergency room on Tuesday. Uh, from what I understand, he's still in the hospital. He's a little bit better, though, so we just keep praying for him. And now, if you're watching online, I just want to let you know that we love you, and we're praying for you. And happy birthday, Harvey. <laughs> okay. Mary Haynes, um, she's at home but she's, she was running a little low-grade fever for a little bit and a stomach issue. So if you could please continue to pray for her. DJ is going to the leg, leg doctor on Tuesday. So she's praying that she won't need to have surgery, that everything will be healed. Uh, Barbara King uh, requested prayer. She said, please continue for her and the family and her real daughter-in-law. Also, um, Ken Fink's daughter-in-law's family would appreciate prayer uh, that the Lord would comfort the family because Jim did pass away uh, yesterday morning. We had prayed for him. He was on a ventilator. So please pray for the family. Also, Anthony Sagalini, um, please continue to pray for that family with the loss of the grandmother. And I just received a, a prayer request from um, Brian a few minutes ago for Susan and Kevin. So please pray for them also. And of course, we want to keep our pastor and his wife in prayer. Okay? So those are the prayer requests for this week. So um, could we just bow our heads for a moment and ask the Lord to intercede? Lord God, we thank you very much that we can come to you that you love us and that you care for us, Lord, and that you are a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We praise you, almighty God. We lay these requests to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Al Brown, Lord God. We pray for a complete and total recovery in every area of his body in Jesus' name. 
We continue to pray for Mary Haynes, Lord, that she will be totally recovered, Lord God. We pray for DJ also that when she goes to the doctor on Tuesday, she will be so happy to hear that her issue has healed and she will be fine and will not need surgery. Lord, we continue to pray for Barbara King and her family and her uh, real daughter-in-law, Lord. Whatever they need, Lord God, I pray that you will supply that need. And also we pray for those grieving for the loss of Jim today. Father, I pray that your spirit would blanket their hearts and their minds and be at peace. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you are taking care of everyone, Lord God, in our church family. We pray also that you would please comfort uh, Anthony Sagalini's family, Lord God. And Father, whatever Susan and Kevin need, Lord, I just pray you'll supply that need for them. Lord God, you are a great God. There's nothing impossible with you. And Lord God, we pray for Pastor Emmanuel and son. I pray for extra wisdom, Lord, and guidance in every situation, Lord God. We just thank you that they are here, and we, I pray that you will bless them, that your Holy Spirit would be heavy upon them and in them, and guiding and leading them in Jesus' name. And so I give these requests to you, mighty God. I pray you will in, intervene, Lord, and you will complete all that they need. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Yeah. 
Scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 1079 or up on the big screen. Father God, as we read these scriptures, may the Holy Spirit open our minds to reveal your word to us. Amen. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as John did. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, our message today is being brought to you by one of our own, Sister Karen Rosano. I ask that you give her a warm Browns Mills United Methodist Church greeting. I keep her in your prayers as she delivers this message. Karen. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little intimidating seeing my name up there. I got some pretty big shoes to fill here. Good morning. Good morning. As you all know, I am not a friend of standing up here and speaking in public. So I'm gonna do my very best. When pastor asked me to do this, my first reaction was, what do you need me to cry about? Because we all know I'm a weeper. <laughs> um, but he's prepared me today. We got this. <laughs> I'm going to put them right here. <laughs> so the focus statement I'm going to start with first. It says, sometimes God's grace surprises us in ways we could not have imagined. We are called to actively respond and to stand up. We are called to live in gratitude and celebrate to be witness to the world of what God has done in our lives. So now this is the part where I'm supposed to speak about how God has done things in my life. But as I sat down, see it's starting, sorry. <laughs> As I went through the week and I sat down trying to think of just one thing, 
that God has changed my life. I couldn't do it. He's given me so many blessings. He's given me all you guys to support me. Thank you. I won't cry the whole time, I promise. He's given me children to love, grandchildren to love, another family to love. He's put many children in my path through work because I work with special needs children and I love all of them like they're my own. So I really couldn't think of one way that he's changed my life because he's carried me through so many downs and he's given me so many ups. So actually yesterday, as I was at football with the grandkids and everything was crazy and we're trying to get to the game and feed the kids and I got 50,000 things in my hand and they're asking me for everything. <laughs> this, is, this is true, Pop Pop knows. Um, my littlest one, Santino, who you all know, turn around and gave me one, one sentence because I said, hey, everybody, where are you going? I got all your stuff. Who's helping me? I got, your, I got everything for you. And he turned around and he said, Nana, I got your back. <laughs> so that's all I have on my paper is I got your back because God has our back. He has my back all the time because there's so many days that I don't even want to get out of bed. And I have so many things to do. Like everybody else, you're like, oh, we got to get up and do this and that. But God has our back. And I try to remember that every day. So I'm going to try and get through this scripture the best I can. So we all face different challenges in our life and things that hold us back. For some of us, that might be a health challenge physical, emotional, and even mental, a job loss, a broken relationship, and so on, we often hope and pray for clear, practical solutions to our immediate problems. Sometimes, though, if we listen and pray and pay attention for God's voice, we may find that God has something different or even greater in store. We may find that God's grace pulls us up to a new way of life, that we didn't know even was possible. Disability was understood differently in the ancient Near East than it is today. Physical disabilities were associated with sin, whether the disabil disabled person or in the parent or ancestors of that person. They not only affected people's abilities, but also the way they were perceived and treated by their communities. They were typically pushed to the, mar the margin socially and economically. In this passage, we can see that the man lame from birth was allowed to beg, but he was not treated as, as a full-fledged member of the community. He was literally left outside at the gates. Why physical healing is understood as grace in the context of the ancient understanding of disability we must be cautious not to imply that people with disabilities need to be healed or rid of their disabilities, to be made whole or well and loved. We see a man who could not walk from birth going about his daily routine, being laid at the temple gates so he could beg for money. Getting money would help him to continue to live. It seemed like the most he could do to improve the situation. When he asked Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, for money, they say, look at us. There is an invitation here to see and be seen by the disciples. The grace begins with being truly seen as a human being. The man's response is one of expectation. He expects to receive something from them. His expectation can be seen and expressed of hope that God will provide. You might explore how living with hope and expectation is important for us to be open to God's grace in our lives today. 
Though the man lame at birth expected to receive something and did receive something, what he received was not what he expected. He hoped for what was realistic and practical, but not for what he really needed. Yet the disciples met him and saw beyond his immediate request to his true need for healing. If we are open to God's grace, we too might be surprised at the unexpected ways God delivers. We might also see the alms here as a symbol for the world and the world's answer to our problems. When Peter says, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. Peter is giving the man the gift of God's grace, which heals in a way worldly answers cannot. The command to stand up and walk in Jesus' name must have been shocking to the man to receive the shocking gift of grace. He had to respond in faith and actually stand up and walk. Notice the disciples take him by the hand and help him up. They do not leave him to figure it out on his own. We too are called to actively respond to the grace that is held out to us by Jesus, and we are called to help others up when they are in need of God's grace. The gift of grace is the life-altering gift of new life in Jesus. For this man, there is a clear before and after a rebirth. On top of the physical healing, his relationship with the community was healed. He is no longer left outside at the temple but enters the temple with them praising God. Although the Bible although the Bible doesn't give us a follow-up story, it seems likely that this moment of grace would have been continued. Ripple effects in his life, perhaps allowing him to provide for his family or even establish a family. When we respond to God's grace, and when we are agents of God's grace in others' lives, we never fully know what kind of changes might take place. The new heal, newly healed man recognizing his amazing event as the work of God and responds by walking and leaping and praising God. He did not just say thank you or see you later, but rather though his response became a witness, through his response became a witness to an living lesson about God's grace. His response of gratitude sparks wonderful and amazement at what had happened to him, provoking curiosity about the power of Jesus to heal. Where in your life are you experiencing challenges? We all experience challenges. Don't be afraid to ask for help and be open and receptive to the different forms it may come in. Luke, the man who showed up every day to ask for alms, persistence, and hope for our key. What might you need to do to respond to God's grace? Or how are you being called to stand up? With God, everything is possible. Where in your life have you received the blessing you didn't expect? Have you thanked God? Did you walk and leap and praise God? If not, it's not too late. What would it look like to practice gratitude and to walk and leap and praise God in response to the blessing? Where in your life can you be like Peter and John? They were non-judgmental and showed Christ's love and mercy. Pay attention for situations in your life where your first instinct is to judge or to walk by, and instead consider how you could show Christ's love. Imagine the kind of attention we would get if we're all leaping and praising God. People would want to know what we have and would want it for themselves. It may not be obvious to us in the moment, but when we genuinely live our lives as a response to God's grace, people notice. As a church, what 
are we doing to be aware of the challenges that people are having and the ways that we can show grace? Extend a hand and be the unexpected blessing to them. How is our church making a difference in our community? How are you making a difference in our community? That's a good question that I'm sure lots of people may be pondering. What can you do for the community of Browns Mills? There's a lot of people out there who need us. Not just us as a church, but you as an individual. It could be a smile when someone's having a bad day. Here I go again. It could be a hug. Some days it will help you just as much as it will help them. If I have a bad day at work, I can turn around and see a smile on one of my kids' faces. They may not be able to talk. They may not be able to express it in any other way other than to smile at me. And that little smile helps me know that I'm making a little tiny difference. I try hard with the teenagers, whoosh. <laughs> we all know how teenagers could be. At the car wash, Who I was asking pastor for prayers because it was one fire after another with all those emotions going at the same time. This one's arguing with that one, that one's upset about this one. And finally I asked them, as they were all bored and fighting, you had fun at Ignite, and you like the good stuff, but you have to work through the bad, the bad stuff, too. Because what did, honestly, I said it to him, how do you think Jesus felt when he had to, to, to get to bear the cross? Do you think it was easy for him to have to get disciples to believe in him? And then they all kind of had that light bulb go off and decided they were going to behave and actually start having fun. And thank you all for supporting them in any way that you can. Because it's even just saying hello to them because they are part of this church, they're the future of this church. I know I said it's like my slogan, but they really are the future of this church. All the children are, not just the teens. So... My last little, my closing, is when we open our hearts to each other, we allow grace to enter. It's as simple as that. Just open your heart. And bloom with grace. Care, love, give, forgive, and inspire. Thank you for allowing me this actually honor, Pastor. Um, bringing me out of my shell a little bit. And be someone's inspiration. Be someone's, like I tell the kids, you never know what someone else has going on. And, and we have some serious talks, me and the kids. You know, stuff leads to mental health issues and stuff as deep as suicide because they are teens, and teens go through that. And I tell them, tell your story, because you never know. Someone right next to you could be going through the same thing, and usually they are. And once they realize that, they know that they have a deeper connection with another person next to them. So the person next to you that you don't know, you don't know, they look like everything is happy and regular and life is the greatest, it could be the worst day of their life. Just reach out to somebody, a simple smile, a simple hello. And remember, as Tino says, I got your back. <laughs> Pastor, I didn't need him after all. <laughs> Thank you. Karen, thank you so much for that message. Thank you. Our closing 
Lincoln is 593 if you wish to sing out of your hymn book. Here I am.
the last verse, the last chorus again here. I am Lord. Sing with me. It is Come on, sing it with the voice God has given to you. I have heard you calling in the night. Every heart I will go, Lord. If you lead me, if you lead me. take this moment spend some few seconds in prayer I don't want this to just be a song but let it be a prayer from your heart to the Lord now Lord I've heard your voice I've heard your word today to testify of your grace and let us all pray this simple prayer today God here I am God here I am God here I am I am ready Lord Prepare my heart to be ready. Prepare my soul, my spirit to be ready. Come on, let it be your prayer. I want to hear you praying. Come on, let it be your prayer that God, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Use me. Use me. Here I am. I may not be qualified, but here I am. I may not deserve, but here I am. I may not be in the books but here I am, oh God. Here we are today. Let it be your prayer to the Most High God. Lift up your hands to God. Lift up your prayer. Lift up your hearts to God. That God, here we are as a church on this latest Sunday. We declare all your people. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh. Come on, all over this place. Come on, give clap to the Lord. Amen. Come on, give some clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I enjoy this service. I don't know about you, but I wish every Sunday is latest Sunday. How about that? How about that? Come on, give clap to the Lord for the ministry of everyone here. Today we celebrate every minister here. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a minister. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a minister. You are a minister. You are a minister. And look at them and say, rise up. Oh, come on, yell at them. Say, rise up and testify of the grace of God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful assignment and commitment we have. You know, John Wesley said, we are all priesthood, priesthood of all believers. And I want to see this happening more and more and more and more uh, more and more. You know, if you are here, you say, I want to take my ministry to another level. Our doors are open. I want to serve God. I want to grow in my ministry. Yes, I'm retired, but I, I don't retire in ministry. I want to do ministry to the Lord. We are all priesthood of believers. We are all, each and everyone here has a ministry. And that is what we call Lady Sunday. And this should not be once in the year. D, how about that? This shouldn't be once in the year. But today, as you go out, as we go to the places God has called us, know that, first of all, you have received grace. Amen? Amen. And you are called to testify of the grace of God. Amen? Amen? God bless everyone. Come on. Thank you so much, Karen. Come on. Let's appreciate Karen. Um, thank you, Karen, for being bold. 
Sometimes ministry needs boldness, right? But thank you for not, you know, being intimidated by me. But <laughs> God bless you. And God bless everyone for your ministry. God bless every one of us. Let's continue. I look forward to see each and every one of us on Wednesday night for dinner church. Let's come around, engage the people that are coming, engage them, love on them. And let's share meal and dinner together. And if you came out to worship today, we, we cherish it. God bless you so much for coming out today. Amen. And uh, please know, if you're worshiping online also, we are so glad you are able to worship with us online. But even though I didn't give the message today, still my name is Pastor Emmanuel, right? <laughs> And I approve Karen's message today. Amen. Come on, give clap to God. And let's receive benediction. Let's receive benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of the living God, and may the sweetest fellowship of God's Holy Spirit, let it be with you. Let it be with us even now and forevermore. Amen. Please have a blessed week. We love you. And God loves you. There is nothing we can do about it. God bless you. Amen. Amen.